Howdy everybody, and welcome back to the Mega Man tutorial. Today we are going to work on implementing some of these alternative weapons that we have programmed the ability to swap between in the last episode. So let's get cracking. Alright, so we got our uh, player object here, but what we need is come on over to our player objects buster shot because we are going to implement the code for all of these extra weapons inside of this one buster shot so that way you only have one object that simulates all of the actions of the various multiple different weapons this makes it easier to program to some extent I, you don't have to do it this way I just did it this way because I did it this way but uh, you could have it all as multiple different objects. It wouldn't hurt it to have different objects for every single uh, different uh, ammo shot. Uh, I, this is just the way I did. The main thing that you have there is the parent projectile, and that's what makes allows you to be able to use multiple objects for each different buster shot if you feel like it, because they would all be treated as a parent player projectile because of the parent projectile uh, bit. So uh, luckily... But uh, I programmed it so you don't have to. All right, so let's uh, pull up the code on the other side over here as soon as I can find it. All right, there we go. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Create event, step event, and user event. So we start off with user event buster here, right? And we are going to be using, uh, as far as our states go, Step event, state, where's state set up? There it is. Object player dot weapon. Yeah, that's right. So back over here we have our different weapons, Buster, Atomic, etc., 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 right? So now we need to be able to change the state here. We are going to add state 5, 6, and 7, which is the air shooter, the leaf shield, and the bubble lead. Actually, strike that on the leaf shield. We do not implement the leaf shield because I did not put in the leaf shield. So we're just going to add other user event 5. Air shooter. And other user event 7. Bubble lead. And these should be fairly simple. They actually will go in here very quickly. We're going to copy and paste this code real fast because it's all code you've seen before. So just copy and paste it from wherever you have it in your project. X speed is equal to approaches are direction facing times max speed. That's basically the same. Uh, y speed is negative fall speed because we actually go rise up instead of falling down then floor fractions uh, just our speed fractions as usual collisions and movements no complex collisions because they just fly through everything until they hit something at which point that something destroys them so x plus equals x speed and y plus equal y speed and animation just set it equal to animation speed I can't even remember if there's a sprite for it. That, uh, well, there is a sprite for it, but uh, what's the animation for it? Yeah, there is an animation, I guess. Wee, a little spinny tornado. All right, so we got all that into there. That is literally all we have to do for the air shooter to work properly. So let's also throw in the bubble lead. The bubble lead is slightly more complex because we actually have to have it detect the ground and bounce and then once it uh, hits the ground and bounces then it has to stick to the ground instead of flying up into the air or anything again. So throwing in here we have this uh, first ground hit uh, variable. We set that up back here if you remember. So uh, if uh, we have hit the ground once and we are not currently on the ground, then set my X speed equal to zero. But if we have not hit the ground or are, we are currently in the air, 
then set my XP to equal to uh, whatever this is. So approach towards direction facing. So if we've uh, hit the ground and we are not currently on the ground, so if we're still in the air, then set my X speed equal to zero. And uh, for this fall speed, it's uh, the same as uh, with the air shooter, but instead of negative fall speed, we use regular fall speed. Y fractions are the same, and we're gonna use the regular collision to movement scripts for this. Uh, I can't really remember exactly the reason why I have this set up exactly that way. I'll remember once we actually uh, test it out in game. But uh, until then, we'll have to go on faith with that there. If animation hit frame 3, then image speed equals 0. The bubble grows after you shoot it, and once it reaches full size, then we don't want it to grow any bigger. Else image speed is equal to animation speed. If we're on ground, then first hit is equal to true. If we're on ground and the next speed is equal to zero, then destroy me. Oh, that would be why. Uh, because uh, if we are on the ground and our X speed has been set to zero, then we want to destroy the bubble. It would be set to zero if uh, we've hit the ground and in on ground oh oh that's uh if you go over a ledge it disappears i think and we pretty much just copy in our ground check uh, code from the uh, player object over into here as well so we can tell if we are on the ground or whatever So both of those are in there now. We need to come back to our player. And we have the move state, shoot state. So previously we had this uh, region where we're creating bullets. So, uh, you know, remember I had a bunch of code in there, but I deleted it because we weren't going to use it right away. So now we are actually going to use all that shoot code for the various different bubbles for the different ammo. All right, so let's pull that in. So Buster is creating it as normal, but Air Shooter, if object's test type ammo is greater than or equal to three, so you need to check to make sure that ammo, we're not out of ammo before we create a bullet. Then if we can actually create a bullet, then create the bullet sound. And object stats dot ammo, take away the ammo from the when we actually use it. And for the air shooter, we create three instances of the buster shot at the same time, all in the same place, at uh, 16 times image X scale, so on our left or right, and Y minus 13. Then with the first one, we give it a speed of 1.5. With the second one, we give it a speed of two, and with the third one, we get it a speed of 2.5. This is important because each one of them goes flying off at a slightly different uh, pace. So they cover the screen. And same thing right here. Bow lead. Make sure we have ammo. If we have ammo, create a bullet at our gun's position. Create a sound. Take away ammo. Set the speed of the bullet to 2 and the Y speed equal to negative 4 because the uh, bubbles, they come flying out into the air and then they do a belly flop onto the ground. Uh, I should just mention that this would actually have different properties if you were underwater and I have not included underwater into this tutorial so uh, you'll have to come up with your own for that if you're going to do that. We also go over here to the move shoot state and and paste all that code into there. Climb state. Climb shoot state. And this is an example of an excellent place where putting this all into a script would probably be better than just uh, having it 
all here and copy and pasting the code into each of the different states. But I'm trying to minimize the use of scripts in order to maximize uh, the ability to show off everything. And because back in the day, I believe the older free version of GMS2 had a script limit, I don't know if it still does. So I was just keeping the amount of scripts that you can create down. That way, you don't go over those sort of limits. Okay, so now we can create bullets. Let's give it a test. There we go, our air shooter's going out. We're using up our ammo properly. And bubble. Boop, boop, boop. There it goes. It disappears when it hits a... Uh... And there it goes. That's proper. It's supposed to uh, climb down the ledges and disappear if it runs into anything. Oh, I'm all out of ammo already. <laughs> all right. Um, so now we want to actually make Mega Man change his color when we actually do this. So let's come over to our draw event for Mega Man. And I got permission from pixelated Pope in order to show off how to use the palette swap system that he has as set up. I highly suggest you go over and download it from the source and tip him if you can. He would love the uh, tips because his code is worth its weight in money. I think it's only a couple dollars so definitely worth it for this uh, bit of code. I certainly know nothing about how it works. It uses a, a uh, uses a shader to uh, do the uh, shading and all that to uh, do its palette swapping, which I should actually show you real quick. We have to add it in here. So come over to shaders, create shader, call it shader underscore palette underscore swapper. And It's like the, all the codes there is the same, good, so don't need to worry about that. But over here, we need to put in all this code here, so uh, don't pay attention to what it says, just copy and paste it and be careful because all of the capitalization is important. Um, if you're interested in uh, in uh, shaders, there are a lot of tutorials you can get into that will tell you a little bit more about how they work and whatnot. Anyways, uh, you can either just copy what I got here, or you can go and download it from the source, like I was telling you about. So, anyway, so now that you got the shader in there, we'll just hide that over there. Actually, let me zoom in real quick, make sure that you guys can see it real good, and. All right, your moment of truth is up. So now we're going to go back to the player object. Actually, we're going to come over to our scripts real quick, our macro script. And we want to enable this script here, palette swap init. And uh, you probably don't have it there because I didn't include it into the uh, system. So you'll have to create it underneath utilities or underneath uh, its own palette swap uh, area or something. So just create a script and call it palette underscore swap underscore init. And I've actually modified this code a little bit in order to uh, minimize the amount of the amount of 
code involved in using it because the full version has a lot of capabilities for multiple uh, palettes and all sorts of things if you wanted to be able to do a lot of different uh, palette swapping options but we only need to use some of the very simple options for it so we're just setting up a couple of global variables here so we set up our shader variable as palette swapper which is what we called the shader when we made it and uh, get some texel size which is needed and get these uh, uniforms which are how you get variables for a uh, shader so we'll initialize all that stuff so that we can use the palette swapping we need a second script as well call this palette underscore swap underscore set and again you can just copy and paste all this without having to worry about too much about what it all means it's all palettes wait it's all shader stuff uh, the we uh, set our shader kind of like how you set a surface and then you use the global variables that we set up earlier to set some information with texture stages and GPU filters there's a lot of stuff I've never actually gotten into so I have no idea what they actually do because they're high-end GPU graphics type stuff that I haven't really gotten into that's why I'm being very vague about how they actually work so then uh, after you set up the uh, shader uniforms and everything so that'll set it all up and then last but not least just a small script palette underscore swap underscore reset and this is just a cheap way to do shader reset instead of actually uh, typing out shader reset more to keep it in line with the rest of the code All right, so player, 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 come over here. Good. So we want to be able to swap the palette for the player whenever he is uh, changing his weapon. So we just use, with all that code that we uh, set up, we just use palette swap set, throw in the palettes. This is a sprite of the palettes that we use. So uh, this would be a palette 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. It'll take uh, the colors that are right here and replace them with the colors that you tell it to use. So uh, it'll take the blue in Mega Man and replace with the, this red. And it'll take this uh, cyan and replace with orange, etc. And this is all based on the order that we set up with the in the create event right here. So Buster being the normal Mega Man palette, and then one, two, three, four being the atomic fire palettes, five air shooter, etc. And it uses weapon as the variable to tell it what index number it's supposed to be drawing with. So let's give it a look real quick. There we go. Now we're Air Man and Bubble Man. And done. That's great. So you can see once you get all that code in there actually using the uh, the uh, palette swapping system is actually really easy so you just have to remember to throw in your palettes and whatever you want the palette to swap to so draw self and then palette swap reset 
All right, so uh, we're at 19 minutes. I think I'll keep this one short since last episode went over super long. And I think we're all about done with the uh, setting up our new weapons and our pallet swapping. So I think it's time for me to thank some Patreon sponsors. And then we'll say goodnight. I'd like to thank Fragile Hearts, Crew Patreon, Damien, Kenneth Klein, John Dickey, and Vladimir Solotov for your support of the NES Game Maker. The NES Game Maker could not exist without the support of people like you. Well, it could exist, it just wouldn't be nearly as cool. All right, thank you everybody for coming. Remember, if you have a comment, leave it in the uh, comment section, whether or not you liked the video or you hated it, or just if you have a problem with the code. You probably, probably have a problem with the code, right? Uh, you can also join me on our Discord, and I'll definitely help you there as well. And uh, until next time, good luck with your programming.